Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25 and in this episode I hope to remedy the fiasco which was the previous episode and fulfill the contract to do aerial surveys of these locations and unfortunately I haven't been able to figure out the aircraft issue yet but maybe I can deal with it using rockets and I've gone with a strictly strictly traditional design a classic design if you will I think uh, well fans of 50s sci-fi I'm not particularly one myself but uh, fans of 50s sci-fi sci should recognize this sort of thing and I think uh, when in doubt uh, go with go with the old-fashioned way and so here we are I don't know if it's gonna work um, the center of lift center of mass issue especially on the way down might be funny uh, might tend to tip this around or flip it somehow but we have parachutes hopefully it'll be alright and we don't intend to create too much re-entry heat so no worry there because we're just going suborbital and uh, suborbital with not much velocity at that the key thing here is control and for that I've got fins I have I have even used Werner engines for the first time so I'm sure a lot of you have probably been wondering why don't you slap some burners on the top of that thing well this time we will because this time the control issues are well I mean apparently I've been having control issues I don't know maybe it's just this pod maybe it's the way it's shaped or something but well I've gone very conservative this time and hopefully it'll work out for me I'm gonna start it off on the lander legs with them deployed and suspension locked I don't think that was our problem last time. We'll see. Uh, and for this, at least we've got a good pattern of bringing the crews back. And I've got uh, the possibility of decoupling this thing, the pod, and having it parachute down separately. So that's another safety feature. This time we're going to have Sherlock do it. And we're going to aim for one of those locations without further delay. Alright, so here we go. Okay, here we are in the launch pad. FMRS is not required. And we... We are going for it again. That's actually further north than I thought it was. It, well, let's go for the Scottsdale again. Okay. Well, throttle up. SAS is on. Preparing smart ASS. All right, there we go. Gear up. So there's a more slow and sedate launch than the previous ones. Maybe it was just the sheer power of the previous launches that was causing me a problem. It was so so high on the thrust to weight ratio. Maybe that caused aerodynamic issues. I don't know. Uh, well, that's a little bit wiggly. I was hoping the fins would help a little bit better than that. Maybe I should just not trust Smart ASS. Though I think the first time I failed last time in the last episode was me handling it. Seems like this thing can deviate more from prograde without going crazy. Yeah, I mean, this thing handles pretty well. Yeah, look at that. I mean, this is pretty far away from the prograde vector. And it still manages. Though we are a little bit we're going a little bit shallow here. I need to keep the nose up. Oh. It doesn't want to deviate too much from prograde, mind you. But it can do this. Not that much. Ah, I pushed it too much. Well, that was my fault. I was being over enthusiastic. Okay, well, this is where the. The Verners will help. Yep, they're doing they're doing a good job there. Okay, well this design looks to be working quite nicely. Uh we need to go further west. Well, that should get us to it. 
We were flying pretty low though. We got we've got a lot of drag. We might actually be too high. Let me go retrograde now. The Verners don't take as much juice as I thought they would. I was worried with their thrust that they would actually be too much, but that should be good enough, right? I don't know. I mean, talk about 24 kilometers. I think we'll be 24 kilometers before we pass over it. Transmitting aerial surveillance on Scott's Dawn. Funny because we don't even have a transmitter. Come on. Alright, well, I'll trust Smart ASS. Uh, retrograde kill rotation. Okay, maybe I shouldn't trust Smart ASS. Okay, well, as expected, not particularly great going down. Would not want this as a recoverable stage, but that's not what it's for. It's just for this. Just for aerial surveillance. And it's... It's gonna do its job. Sherlock is having the time of his life. Yeah, it's trying to point nose down. Not a surprise. But we're going to deal with that by using the parachutes. I'm gonna switch stages there. So probably I'm going to employ the Verners more now, I think. Well, good thing we picked a Kerbal who enjoys this sort of ride. Double check that it is a success. Yes, it is. Okay. Got it. Recover. All right, so that is done. We got one more to do, and Sherlock is available, so let's get him on it. Actually, before sending Cosmo up again with uh, Sherlock, I think I should add some aerodynamic stri uh, strikes in order to kill that roll that we saw. So uh, let me let me do some resizing and. Part of the problem is that the fins are completely rotating. The other ones don't look as good, that's why I use these. It'd be better off to use these, which only have a rudder, instead of having the whole thing move. That uh, diminishes our delta V by quite a lot. These things are actually pretty heavy, aren't they? Look at that. Hmm. Not the best solution. How heavy are these things? They aren't that heavy. But uh, you multiply that by 4.3 tons, it really shouldn't be killing our Delta V that much. And of course I've resized it to be smaller, so situation is not good. We are not going to be able to take off properly like this. Maybe we should just deal with the roll. So let's say like that, and then I dump this liquid fuel. And then this, well that goes back up there. But we're probably going to have some left over in this tank. Try to. Okay, I think uh, that'll do. That's better than putting the strakes on. And maybe the flat surfaces that don't move will help kill the roll. Okay. Okay, so here we are. Ah, I forgot to put Sherlock in. Well, we'll take the Nemone now. And let us target our remaining target, Site 1 LRA. I think we could just head straight west for this one. Alright, well, let's see if this works better than the last one. Let's put that up just in case. Here we go. Whoa! No, 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 no. Uh, hold on. Let's just let it uh, get steady here. I think I can at least trust Smart ASS to keep us pointed up. 
Actually, I don't want that azimuth at all. I want 270. Well, uh, it's uh, handling the roll a little bit better than it handled last time. I think. It's still a little bit jerky. Yeah, it's still a little bit jerky. And actually, I want that off and I'll put the SAS on. Aerodynamics is still a bit of a mystery to me. I mean, I know what the airplanes are supposed to look like, and I know the basic principles, but some of the more interesting aspects of, ooh, that's not good, uh, of uh, airflow fluid dynamics, I'm not very well versed on. Okay, I seem to be having more trouble this time than last time. Okay. Yeah, I'm having trouble earlier. And I wasn't trying to deviate this time. Last time I was willfully trying to see where it was gonna flip out on me. Maybe it's just the aero spikes. I should just use a gimbling engine. Yeah, I really think the previous version was better. Maybe it's the way the fuel is draining. But as I go down, I want it to be in this direction anyway. We'll see if it's more stable going down. Well, that's the end of our fuel. Well, sorry about that, Denemony. If this doesn't work, it's uh, my fault for being a little bit... Oh, we got it. All right. We we made it. Okay, full parachute deployment. Stabilizing. And we got SAS on don't have any way to slow down our descent. Let's be quick to recover this. Oh, oh, it's tipping. Uh, uh, uh. Um. Oh, something blew up. Oh, it lo looks like we've got separation. What actually got destroyed? Uh, oh, the winglets. And some debris. And some parachute. Okay, well, anyway, let's recover vessel. Okay, well, uh, we got our crew back. And, yeah, we just got the pod. So, the, let, let me prioritize getting the technology unlocked. So, we've got this new technology, which has a lot of stuff in it. But really what I wanted was the thrust plate multi-adapter. So I've unlocked that and let's verify that I can use the new sizes of the thrust plate multi-adapter. Okay, let's pick up the debris at least. Okay, so Cosmo debris, recover. I got a lot of Cosmo debris. Okay, well Here's Cosmo, but let us just check out the thrust plate multi adapter. And where are you, thrust plate multi adapter? Oh, we've got all these new things. Star lifter short strut. Wow, that's a big thing. Uh, 2.5 meter to 5 meter adapter. 5 meter quad adapter. Uh, big things can be done with these. Whoa. 5 meter to 4 5 meter adapter. Co Star lifter cargo rack. Go. So, can we. Yes, we can go to 6 meters now. So now we can build bigger rockets. And I have an idea, so let me, let me put that together and then I will show you what I have planned. Okay, so first of all, this is the asteroid docking module. Remember, we needed to get the asteroid around Minmus docked up with the station, and this is the module that's going to do that. It's got the advanced grabbing unit here, and so it'll grab onto the asteroid, and here's the docking port. 
this is a transfer stage. Actually, this thing has many opportunities to transfer. The second stage of the rocket I've designed could possibly transfer it to Minmus as well. So, but just in case, we've got uh, that transfer stage there. And that's partly to test uh, the mass capabilities of this rocket. And it's still a light payload. But what we've got is we've got a stage here with two LVT-45s. Okay, this is not a recoverable stage at the moment, though it could be. It's got plenty of thrust to weight ratio and delta V. And uh, right now it's just uh, getting into orbit stage. So, but it could, uh, if you add up the delta Vs, it could possibly transfer something to the moon or Minmus if it's not planning to come back. Uh, so three minute stage there. And then at the bottom, and the reason why it is called Sparrow 9 is because it's got nine of the LVT-45s at the bottom. And it's got these landing struts. It's a, it's a reasonably expensive, st well, you take a look at the total launch cost is 70, 70k. And if we take this off, it's half the launch cost. Now, the, we've got that fuel tank problem. And so let me, let me just size a fuel tank that that's the same size as this like so so this is the fuel tank so let's take this off the fuel tank cost is oh that's still in the way so that's eight thousand but it should be more than that if we take this off let's see so it's actually a discount nine thousand minus nine thousand for the tank empty so really what it should be is what minus nine thousand probably probably twenty six thousand something like that so anyway uh it hardly matters uh we've got a large budget if you want to take two million off our budget for whatever uh fuel tank issues we've got we've still got plenty uh, and really, you know, we're we're at the stage where uh, we're approaching, you know, sandbox kind of situations. So uh, I'm not really too bothered by it. But okay, I am pretty bothered by it. But anyway, that's the situation. And this is an expensive enough stage that we want to retrieve it. Now, one thing you'll notice is no parachutes there are no parachutes uh, so this is going to be an fmrs recoverable stage and what we do is we use this stage to boost everything else up the second stage takes it from there but this has to come down on its own power hence the huge air brakes uh, we've got the burners now and the landing struts of course now i originally thought about using the these landing struts where are they these guys which would of course look a lot better but I need to size them up to their maximum because they've got these uh, they're very tiny the actual lander legs and so even they though they look better uh, I haven't sized them up max and also you notice the cost difference uh, 65,000 here I add them on whoa 158,000 I thought I didn't even think they was gonna be that much but yeah, they're they're a little bit weird on their cost. So, their the lander legs are more expensive than the entire rocket. So I decided to just go with these. I can't imagine that they provide that much benefit over these landing struts. And so even though these are uglier and those would look a lot better, I I just can't afford it. So we will save that amount of funds. Okay. So, uh, well, my RAM is getting out of whack here. Uh, let me restart, and then we'll uh, test this out. Well, I guess we'll test launch this payload. I, I can't see any reason not to. Okay, so this time we will need FMRS armed, because, well, otherwise we can't do what we're about to do. Okay, so throttle up. SAS is on. We will be using Smart ASS for this. We're not trying for something within the atmosphere. And let's go.
lots of wiggles. Otherwise, control seems fine. The roll is smooth, I think. We're gonna go for a steeper ascent than usual. And that's because I want to, of course, bring the stage back here. And so that's the trick. Worth noting that the diameter of this rocket is the same as the diameter of the Falcon 9. But of course it's much shorter, which gives you an idea of how... Wait, I haven't changed pitch yet. Why is it tilting down? Oh, I don't like this. How... How is it doing this? This is a straight up rocket. There's no... There's no funny stuff. I've retracted the air brakes and everything. There's no air brakes. Okay, well, if I don't pitch down further, this thing is gonna flip out. Oh boy, this is that is going to 80 when I've got 85 there. This is very strange. We've been having weird aerodynamics. I haven't updated any mod. But we've been having weird aerodynamic effects. I don't know if anybody's got a theory. We're not going with the trajectory I wanted. Anyway, as I was saying, Falcon 9 is really tall because you need the Delta V to get into orbit. But you notice the LVT-45 is barely fit on the bottom of this. Which means... and they have a only a third uh, or yeah about a third of the thrust of the Falcon 9's uh, engines which means that our engines are relatively oh here we go I, I've been just having this problem recently This is a straight up rocket, it's not supposed to have this problem. Well, I think uh I think we've got a issue on our hands here. Okay, well I'm gonna take control again. I'm gonna use the Verners again. And I don't know what's going on here. I'm actually pretty surprised that Smart uh, at that Far hasn't had something to say about aerodynamic failures at this point. Not what I wanted to do actually. Wow, this thing is jittery too. Can you see it's jittering around a bit? Okay, well. Okay. Come on. We're probably going to have to ditch this stage now. Let's have it. Good thing this one also has a thrust weight ratio greater than one, but can it control better than the previous stage? Oh boy. so close it's like this stuff 
wants to deviate from prograde now. Let's go around this way. Not the best way to go, but no. Okay, well, <clears throat> this is not working well. Let's. I'm gonna abandon this, and I'm gonna try and see if I can bring the other part down. Okay, here we go. This is now a much heavier stage, but let's do this. Boost back. Actually, this would be a good time for a landing prediction. Let's actually use MechJeb landing predictions. As uh, you see, I had it on the KSC pad already. Okay, that's as close as that's going to get. Aw, oh, nuts. What? What? Wait a minute. Okay, hold on. Well, okay, so our surface horizontal speed was 164. Let's just say I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to let it rip my thing apart again. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to go flat horizontal this time, I'm going to go a little bit tilted to hopefully the aerodynamics isn't going to hate me as much. But this is not a proper test, obviously uh, it will be a lot higher when I do this normally. Okay, well, it looks all right. Oh, we're, we're not nearly there yet. Okay, that's about it. Air brakes. That's what I want now. Okay, no parachutes like I said. I think it's okay to get landing gear down. Seems like we're a little bit off. Can we let's get the burners on now. Tough to do it here. Wow, 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 wow. Very unsteady, this thing. Go up, come on, go down. Gotta need a lot more practice with this if, we, if I'm gonna do this regularly. Okay, well, at least that sort of works. It looks like uh, we could do with about 900 meters per second more up and then, and then boost back. Remember, uh, what, as we're launching the thing up, we're not getting too much horizontal speed. Most of the horizontal speed will be gained by the, by the second stage. We're mainly going to be gaining vertical speed, so the amount of horizontal speed we're going to kill is not too much more than what we killed this time. So, 
so yeah, most of the Delta V that we have remaining should be going to to uh, boosting that stage higher. This is pretty heavy too. Uh, we should be landing with much less mass. Hmm. Anyway, for a first attempt, maybe okay, but I gotta figure out my my problems with the aerodynamics. Definitely had some problems there, and I don't understand it. I mean, it was dragging this thing down. We've got fairings, the thing is streamlined. I can assure you that symmetry was used on attaching these things. This is not a weird cone, this is a straight cylinder. So, I've got a lot of thinking to do. Alright, so uh, on that note, and with a minor success, and certainly a contract fulfillment and new stuff unlocked, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.